Arkansas Missing and Unidentified Persons Initiative. In 2004, the National Institute of Justice determined uh, uh, missing persons as our silent mass disaster. I think sex trafficking has been part of the conversation for about three years. We have major interstates that cross. We have the um, north, south, east, west interstates that literally cross here in our state. It makes it a quick exit. Um, it makes it a quick entry. You know, you can get a straight shot to Canada, a straight shot to Mexico. So those factors play a large role in sex trafficking and where it happens. And that's one reason that Arkansas is so heavily involved in it. Um, we're just easy access to a lot of, of states. They're, they're, they're well, well versed on how to, uh, how to manipulate these, these children and, um, and to use the internet and, uh, to, uh, to, as a tool to manipulate them. You know, there are 15,000 registered sex offenders in Arkansas. And if you are a registered sex offender and this is something that is an issue for you, where are you going to go? You're going to go where the kids are. If that's something that is driving you, well, where are the kids? They're online, you know, 11 hours a day, they're in front of a screen. And the mindset of, of a teenager is completely different. They're not thinking, I've got to worry about this, you know, a, a sexual predator or something like that being online. What we normally think of as a child being kidnapped and taken far away and then being trafficked, what we've seen become the norm is that uh, young people get compromised into a situation in their school or with someone they meet at a mall or someone they've been talking to online. They get coerced into sending an inappropriate picture and the next thing they know, uh, they're being blackmailed over that. One of the big ones is how many cell phones does this child have? You know, do they have the one that the parents bought them and then they've got another one? Um, you don't know where it came from. Maybe they said they purchased it themselves. Secondly, you know, tattoos. Often if they're being sex trafficked, they'll have unexplainable tattoos. Notice their attendance at school. Are they missing a lot of Fridays and Mondays because that gives them a four-day weekend? You have to talk to them, educate them. As a family, continue to have the conversations. Don't be afraid to check their cell phones. Don't be afraid to get into their social media. As parents, we are afraid of invading their privacy. Get up in the middle of their privacy. Know what they're doing. Know who they're talking to. Establish that no one takes cell phones to their rooms at night. These are hard and unpopular parenting decisions, but you will be able to keep your kids safe. I think they think, okay, I'm giving my child a means of communicating to me if there's a problem of, of being socially connected to their friends, but really what they need to be thinking of is I'm giving access to my child, possibly for every sexual predator that's within this area or, or not even in this area, could be across state lines. And not only that, if they do things in a certain way, they'll actually know exactly where that child is because of the location devices mm -hmm. on that phone. The fact is 2,000 children are reported missing every single day in the United States. It happens every day. Talk to your child, check their social media, know who their friends are, be right up in the middle of their life so that they are not one of those 2,000 kids.